So we have a coin in the Josh. Can we get started? Yep, go ahead. I'd like to call the tax and planning board to order. Could you please take the roll? I can. Don Span. Present. Ronald Bissarn. Present. Carrie Bickford, present. Larry Grand, present. Dan Flagg, present. Scott Libby, present. All present except Joshua Spooner. I don't see him. All right, I haven't heard from him. So. Okay. Um, next item is the approval of the minutes for the September 22nd, 2022 meeting. Uh, you all should have had a chance to see that. Is there any? All right, then go ahead and motion. I move that we adopt the minutes of the September 22, 22, 2022 <laughs> minutes as submitted. Second. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? And one abstention. Okay. Thank you. So, no abstention. Uh, sorry. Wrong. Wrong. Thank wrong. You. Yeah, he was in I fixed my motion, but I just did. I started a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we're here for a public hearing. Costco LLC has submitted has submitted a proposed eighty thousand square foot supermarket market basket for review at one sixty nine Thompson Fair Mall Road, tax map R zero five, lot twenty one D zero one zero. And can you tell us on who's on Zoom? Um, we are joined on Zoom by our peer review traffic engineer, Tom Erico, and our peer review engineer, Tom Sosier. Okay, thank you. All right. So, sir, you please introduce yourself and commence. All right. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Doug Reynolds with Laurel Palmer. Uh, with me tonight is Randy Dutton with Laurel Palmer, as well as uh, Jim Lamp and um, uh, John Matthews from Tosco LLC. Um, as you are well aware, um, we've, we've been in front of you for, I think the first time was uh, November of uh, 2021, when we came in front of you for a sketch plan, um, and we, sh we showed you a, a site plan, not too dissimilar from um, what we're showing you tonight. Um, we've gone through a number of iterations uh, with town staff and peer reviewers, um, and, and um, we, we've I believe we addressed most of most of all the the outstanding uh, outstanding items or those few technical things that are still on the uh, the uh, conditions of approval that uh, the staff has provided. Uh, but I'll just go through real quick um, some of the larger items um, that that are the differences um, between the sketch plan and the current we're <coughs> showing. Um, let's see, so I'm going to just pull up this. Old sketch plan, and um, one of the one of the one of the first things that you may notice um, if you're looking at the plan that we're providing tonight, um, the, the, the biggest thing is that we added a we added a leg to the uh, to the roundabout proposed at the main entrance. This was to accommodate uh, potential future development um, off, off of um, Cobham Fair Mall Road. Um, they, they do have frontage on Midway Drive as well, but uh, access to the roundabout um, is something that we wanted to provide now. Um, so just a defined leg for us. Oh, it's it's it, 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 it's just basically the fourth. Uh, so you do have a fourth and intervene on that one. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm, um, on the record. Uh, Jim Lamp, I'm a professional engineer with LT Development, representing um, the developer. John Matthews, uh, and also working with Market Basket. Um, we've been working with the owner of 170 Town Fair Mall Road. Um, we do not have a signed agreement yet, but what we've done is when we first came before you, there were some questions with the um, with the state as well as the traffic designer, thinking that it, you might want to plan for a future fourth leg for the property across the street. Uh, their frontage on Midway is, is only like 
60 or 90 feet. So if they had an entrance on Midway, they'd be right on top of the stop bar and it really wouldn't work for development on their site. <clears throat> so we've been working with the owner. They've had a couple people with you know agreements, but it, so far there's no real purchase of it. Um, we anticipate that they're going to give us a uh, right of way to, to dedicate to the town as well as construction easements to do that. But I want to just be clear, if they don't come to the table and agree with that, it's going to be shifted back towards our site, which was at that original one. But we have every intention of centering it in a right of way, providing additional right of way on our side, as well as right of way on the 170 Town Fair Mall side. Okay. So. That's been presented to the traffic review as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So again, you can see, see what uh, what do you mean by the fourth leg yeah. here, where it's where it's again Thompson Fair Mall Road is the two main legs going through our driveway for the market basket is, is this leg and the fourth leg is across here. And this is a roundabout, not a yep. traffic circle. This is a roundabout, correct? Not a rotary either. Right. Okay. It actually, is a traffic circle. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a roundabout. It's a roundabout. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a circle. Um, if you remember on our sketch plan, we had a right in and right out um, access drive on the north side near Midway. Um, we have since eliminated the right out and we <clears> only have the right in um, from Thompson Fair Mall in this in this area. Um, and again, it, it, it was it was something that you asked and it made a lot of sense um, to, to eliminate that. Not too many people are gonna go right out, out of there. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, it, it, the, the, with an additional, a large additional item that we, that we add is a significant amount of sidewalk. Um, the, 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 the original plan, as you say, there's no sidewalk along this north side of the parking lot. Uh, the sidewalk up through the middle um, is, is, is narrow. Um, and we weren't showing any sidewalk along the frontage um, on either side of the roundabout. So, and again, our proposal through, through comments with staff, uh, we have, we do have this, this full walkway all the way up the side, coming over to the front of the front of the building. This, we widened this um, access, uh, the walkway. So it, again, it's now at 10 feet instead of five. We maintain the 10 feet of landscaping on either side of the, of the, of the walkway. And, and we've, we added the added the sidewalks along the frontage. There are five foot sidewalks along the frontage, and as you get to the roundabout, we, we, they they become uh, multimodal um, access uh, access ways walkways um, to allow for bike traffic to come up onto the uh, up onto the sidewalk um, and navigate around the roundabout without having without having the, the bikes having to deal with the roundabout itself. Um, so again, that that's a significant um, addition. Um, one of the uh, other items that we added was seating areas. Um, if you look real close, the, the corner of the building, um, that we reduced a little bit of the building in this area um, and added seating um, at, with, a, with a covered seating and and this is a pergola, right? Um, yeah. in, in that in that area, we also added um, a couple of picnic tables and and uh, bike racks up to the outer this out. Out parcel, so to speak, uh, parking area. Um, so those are the those are the significant changes um, from the sketch plan that you mm -hmm. saw and and and, and subsequent um, uh, presentations and, and uh, uh, plans. Um, one other item that 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 we did add is we do have a space for uh, EV EV vehicles. Uh, we're going to be um, installing the infrastructure. We haven't uh, got a vendor yet. But that, that infrastructure will be there. Um, so, so again, if you're if you're looking through your packet, um, there's a significant number of waivers that we've that we discussed. We had a meeting in March um, that where we discussed the waivers relative to landscaping and such with the with the with the, uh, with the board. Uh, we 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 felt we received favorable um, decisions, not really official decisions, but favorable um, comments relative to those waivers. Um, and, and staff has agreed and included them in, in the, uh, in the uh, staff report um, relative to this waivers relative to lighting uh, with, within the, the staff report. Again, some minor technical items uh, and which they which staff recommended we work with 
um, public works and, and, and staff to, to confirm uh, that we're meeting what they require. You eliminated one of the waivers, if I remember. Yep. Can you just, I'm trying to remember what that was. <clears throat> it was the last one. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that the major, major streetscapes. Um, I mean, yeah, we no longer need a waiver for that because we've got um, we're, our plan to provide that. Okay. Um, so again, we 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 worked, met with staff, met with peer reviewers, um, addressed a number of items with peer reviewers. Um, <coughs> landscaping, a robust landscaping plan has been provided, even though we have some additional waivers for landscaping. Uh, but we do have a significant amount of landscaping, including we're we're landscaping the center of the roundabout. And um, Market Basket will be maintaining all the planting within the, uh, the center of the roundabout, uh, maintaining and irrigating. So we do have conduits uh, for uh, for irrigation going out, out to the center of the roundabout. Uh, we've, we've coordinated with utilities, moved some, moved some trees around, make sure that the trees are on top of the utilities. Um, and there's a couple of conditions that we know, minor technical items that, that, that are included in the uh, and the staff report, um, and then then one of the one of the major hurdles that we've been working through is a MDOT traffic movement permit uh, with the MDOT, and we are pretty much at the last hurdle. Um, we've we've done a significant amount of um, you know discussions and meetings and, and such with the DOT, and it, and again as you can see in the report. I believe we're we're pretty much hitting um, all of the, their requests at this point, um, and with that, uh, we 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 really appreciate staff's work to date, peer reviewers to date. Um, you know, we hope this is going to be a very successful project in the town of uh, city of Thompson, and um, you know we'll we'll uh, we'll look forward to your comments and questions. I think Jim wants to to stand up and talk about a couple of items. <laughs> I can't help myself. Um, <laughs> before you do, you, know, yep. you, you mentioned that, that traffic movement. I know we have a peer review here as well, but maybe just give a quick synopsis of it. There's a lot there, right? And we get the Winter Street connection and what you're doing there. Um, would you prefer I, Tom? I mean, Tom can go over it, Randy can go over it, we all can go over it. Um, th if that's why Tom's here, <laughs> okay. Tom doesn't want to speak. That's fine. You know, would it be rather? Uh, I'm happy to walk through it if that's. I mean, whatever the board wishes. Um, um, in terms of you know walking through the the traffic requirements, um, in draft form from DOT. Yeah, it, it would. I think it would be useful to maybe at least see see the, see the, a little bit of a higher level than maybe the detail. But yep. uh, if you if you don't mind, let me put him on the screen. Sorry, okay. we have. I'm going to try to share my screen and let me know if it works. Can you see my, my screen? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, so good, good evening. Uh, uh, again, my name is Tom Errico. I'm a senior associate at, at TY Lynn based in Falmouth. Um, I've been the town traffic peer reviewer for um, a number of years. Um, um, you know, the applicant has been working through the, the DOT traffic movement permit process. Um, and uh, for a number of months, we've been, we've been as, as Doug indicated, we've been coordinating quite closely with them um, and working with uh, the DOT regional traffic engineer on, on the project. They, they, I'm not gonna go into the study itself, but they, they they basically developed a very comprehensive traffic impact study that evaluated roadways, um, you know, on Thompson Fairmall Road, 196 Main Street down to Elm Street. So it was a pretty large area and including Winter Street. We knew Winter Street was a concern, particularly of, of the neighborhood. And so ultimately, through all that analysis and coordination, we came up with, as Doug indicated, it's, it's still draft. The, the, the permit that I'm going to kind of walk through right now is still in draft. There, there are a few pieces, and I'll talk about those that are still, um, I'll say, pending. I think we're close. I, I, I don't see any any issues in terms of getting to a, a final final permit. 
Um, the first, the first one is, and it's item two, is constructing a raised median on Thompson Fair Mall Road between 196 and Monument Place. And I have a graphic, if you can see that. Can you see that graphic? So basically, this is what it comprises of. This was this this graphic was developed by the applicant. And basically, it's related to sort of minimizing turn movements at a very complicated section of Thompson Fair Moral Road, 196, McDonald's. Um, and so really, it was to address safety concerns and movements um, in this area. So, so the intent is to, is to build something that's raised and physically prevents movements. Um, this was part of the Topsom Fair Mall Road Master Plan. If you remember, some of you may remember that, that document, but ultimately, many of the improvements sort of follow, follow the guidance and recommendations within, within the master plan. So that's, that's improved. I was, I was on that committee. Okay, great, great. And so that, that was sort of, that, that's, that's recommendation number one from the traffic movement permit. This, the, the second one is complete sidewalk connection, pedestrian signal equip, equipment removal um, and grading at the south southern corner of, of, that, of that same intersection. I'm just gonna go back to that graphic. And basically it's this corner near Arby's. And so for many of you that know it, probably you all know it, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably the most unusual corner that, that we have in Maine and probably, probably in the Northeast in terms of, in terms of the way it, it operates, in terms of function for a pedestrian walk around the corner. They're actually pedestrian signal heads so that theoretically you can get around the corner without being encroached by a vehicle making a turn. So part of the permit will be to look at and ultimately improve that corner. The desired option is to is to is is acquiring some rights from Arby's and basically relocating the the sidewalk um, on their property. And so and so that that's probably the likely outcome. DOT is is going to be providing an alternative, but for some reason the ability to gain those rights becomes complicated. They're asking for an alternative um, option or alternative to, 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 to accomplish the same thing. So that's that's pending. But again, I think I think we're in pretty good shape, you know, on you know as it relates to that. The next requirement is at the Topsom Fairmore Road Winter Street intersection. Um, right now, it's it's a it's a stop intersection only coming out of Topsom Fairmore Road. Um, as part of the study. Um, we asked the applicant to conduct a, an evaluation of, of making it a always stop. So ultimately adding stop signs on Winter Street. And they went through the analysis, they collected data, and, and, and there's pretty, there, there are certain federal standards that we, we meet as part of when you install stop signs or traffic signals. And in this case, the warrants were not met based upon current volumes plus the added volume from, from the market basket project. What we, what we decided was, well, let's require a monitoring study after the project is built to reevaluate those warrants so that we can conclude whether in fact it is not warranted after the project is completed. So that's, that's the, the next, the next item is at the Route 196 I-295 southbound ramp. And I'm gonna go back to my graphics. And, and this is this is the graphic. I suspect these graphics are in your packet. I'm not sure, but but ultimately, again, this this concept is developed by the applicant. Um, there were some some um, safety craft concerns at this location, um, and operational issues at this at this location. So ultimately, if you're coming southbound on 295, um, getting off and headed towards downtown Topsom, um, currently there are two. I'll say inbound or eastbound lanes on 196. The plan is to change that configuration so that there would be one lane, you know, from the west that would have its own lane continuing across the bridge towards towards downtown. The other lane would be made a dedicated right turn lane, and then anybody coming off of 295 and headed to town would have their own lane. So basically, it's free flow. There would be no no conflict. Um, the, the main DOT has had a lot of success with these changes in the state, and they they felt like this was a good solution to to address some of the some of the capacity and safety issues at, at that location. And I I actually made that turn this past weekend, uh, and it 
a really tough turn with it's tough. I mean, part, partly you did have an angle are right? you coming off the ramp you're at a tough angle you're looking over your shoulder speeds are high it's, okay. it's tricky so i think i think that'll be a real nice improvement um you know for that for that location um and then mm -hmm. winter street winter street's got a few components to it um this is this part of the text within the draft permit is being modified um, it's, it's basically going to be a menu of a few things that are going to go on on Winter Street. One will be, um, there will be two upgrade typical crosswalks that will be provided, a new one at Sokoka Circle, the easterly leg of Sokoka. Um, so the applicant will be required to provide a, a, a you know, a painted crosswalk, ADA compliant, um, of ramps and then signage for that crosswalk. There's an existing crosswalk at Bigford Drive. We're being asked that we're, we're asking that it be be um, confirmed that it's ADA compliant meets meets accessibility requirements, um, and then as part of traffic calming, those were originally going to be raised cross crosswalks, but based upon some some field investigations, we determined that 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 may not be the best way to do it. So we're we're suggesting that three speed tables, which are basically raised devices. That slow people down be installed at three locations along Winter Street. Um, you know, basically, basically from Thompson Trail Road, you know, towards towards Bigford Drive. And so um, we're still working out the details on that. Um, but but I think we're 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 in a pretty good place in terms of you know you know finalizing you know finalizing those details. Um, and then lastly, lastly there are. Some impact fees, and these are not these are not impact fees that are related to the town. These are impact fees that that ultimately DOT is asking for as part of upgrading a number of traffic signals. So the applicants being required to contribute forty thousand dollars for each one of these intersections on, the, on, on item number one, and that's really to upgrade the signal system to become something called adaptive signals. Which are you know current sort of high tech signal um, um, equipment with um, certain types of detection that basically adjust timings um, on, a, on a very frequent basis based upon delays and queuing at the intersections. Um, um, again, DOT and other communities have had a lot of success with these types of signal systems. Portland, as an example, Scarborough, another example. And they're seeing improved um, corridor speeds and, and, and reduced delay with that installation. So the applicants are required to, co to contribute 40,000 for each one of those locations, and then $23,000 for upgrades to be adaptive at the Route 201 Elm Street intersection. So we we think you'll we'll, the the um, you know the those changes will have um, I think meaningful benefits in terms of reduced delay even with the project project traffic. Okay, thank you. So I think that's that's it and I'll stop sharing and open up to any questions or other presentations. Okay, thanks. Um, since we have Jim Lamp again, um, since we have Tom on, on the line, I, I'd like to talk to him about the, uh, the corner of Arby's. Because one of the conditions the way it's currently written is that we have to have all of our offsite mitigation complete prior to CFO and opening our store. That's um, an MDOT requirement, not the town's requirement. So my concern on that is that the, if anybody can picture this, is that typically the right of where the right of way in that is bounded <laughs> with the roadway. Arby's has a square corner and it goes across the sidewalk, which forces people out onto the street and back around. The town is trying to get the right of way. One of the solutions, and the time I, I, I don't know if I understand this, but one of the solutions apparently is to get rid of one of the two right hand turn lanes. Correct. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and I, I, I'm trying to figure out a solution that makes sense, not losing a lane because we can't get a, a 200 square foot corner off of Arby's to, to do a sidewalk, complete a sidewalk next to the right way versus moving the whole. This is the one that, this is, Arby's is here, Thompson Fairmoral Road, exiting yeah. here. And, Can you show that plan? And one night, and one night. Yeah, yeah, sure. yep. yeah, we'll do it again, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And, which also has its own pedestrian dedicated light. Yeah, right? which we're taking down as a part of all that. 
So um, what you're, just to confirm, Jim, what you're talking about is a potential contingency plan being developed by MDOT on the chance that the we don't get the yeah, easement, which is I, currently in process. I get. I just see this going to somebody saying, "Well, we don't want to lose a lane," and then we're we're. This is something. We're talking about repairing a sidewalk that's been a condition for how long that, that is over half a mile away from us. That you know, we're here to help them work with the town, but we don't want to be held hostage by this little piece of right of way. Our first offer was to give you know five thousand dollars or whatever it is to the town, and when they get the right of way, have that go it. Um, but to uh, better minds, it's, it's they want us to do it. So we said fine, but we need the right of way. Or an easement, and I'm just trying to, as as Kate said, I'm trying to come up with a contingency so we don't get held hostage by this right of way taking or somebody saying you can't lose an extra right hand turn lane and you know take one whole lane out to get that sidewalk to work. So I'm trying to give something in this conditional approval that gives us a way to solve this. Now understand. So someone. Anyway, well, no, let me let me say something. Um, if anyone thinks it's inappropriate, please tell me, right? But I was on that traffic committee that that previous study was done. That was several years ago now. But anyway, uh, so I'm glad to see some of it starting to get implemented, right? What I do remember of that corner, right? Because what sort of caught my attention is the amount of money that was spent on creating that little crosswalk with the actual traffic thing with people walking across and everything else, right? Uh, so I, my only thought to your, you know, I'm trying to make, build your case, but that was done because that attempt to get the easement had failed the first time around. Oh yeah, that's, that's right? why I'm So concerned. if it failed the first time around, I guess we know that it has a better chance of happening. And there, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but okay. it's fairly far along in the process. Okay. So you had your hand raised. I don't think the original owner of Ivy is around. Okay. And <laughs> she's the one who was behind all the <laughs> mayhem. Okay. Don't don't put that. Erase that last portion. The mayhem comment. Mr. Chairman, for uh, for instance, we're it's going to take us over a year to build our store. We have to build all the offsite. It's going to take some time. If there could be, if the condition could be something along the lines that the town will make reasonable efforts to get the right of way or easements within you know a year and a half. You know, then we'll do it. But if it doesn't happen within two years, we so, should not be long. Maybe we write you a check for five thousand dollars and you figure it out. It, it's just, back to it's a big project to be held up for this. Yeah, understand. And I guess my thought, because if I understand right, it's not ours to approve this. It's MDOT. Um, but it was a town request that it would be put on on the MDOT's requirement. I believe that, that way. Yeah. There were a list that came. There's a wish list that came from the town. That's why we're doing speed bumps on uh, or speed tables on Winter Street. You know, that's not an MDOT. That's a town. Request. Okay, so let me go back to the peer review. If you'd like to make. Sure, sure. I'll, just, I'll just provide a little bit of history and context to to um, um, to this particular situation. Um, I think your your memory spot on that the, the Topsom um, Fair Mall road master plan recommended as, to, as part of a long-term vision is to remove one of the right turn lanes and part of that part of that had to do with when monument place was constructed um it served as an alternative route to to and from the mall area and ultimately it reduced that right turn volume onto 196 significantly so the volume turning right is not of a level that requires two lanes so part of the master the rest of the master plan Evaluated that, determined that you actually don't need it. It doesn't. It doesn't provide, um, you know, necessary capacity to make sure that intersection works. And so, what we did was, as part of this application, we asked the applicant to evaluate it again with the market basket development to confirm that, in fact, that conclusion still holds holds up. And, and in fact, their analysis, the applicant's analysis, 
concluded the same thing that the change of delay and removing one of the right through is, is, is and we're not saying you should we're not saying the applicant needs to do that as part of the project but right now we're working with dot on alternatives for that corner and that has come up as an option and so um you know it, it's again it's part of an adopted business plan within the community so, so you know, as a peer review, it's something that we, you know, I guess the community is striving to do, which is why it's being asked as as for as, as being included as a possible alternative. Can I ask a question because I wasn't here originally? Can someone just please tell me what the actual problem is with that corner? Because I'm just curious. I don't. Yep, so, yep, it's hard to, it's not quite perfect, but, there, but if you look at this, if you look at this aerial view, you can see a wall. There's like a little retaining wall that sits right here. And that wall prevents what you would typically have for a corner where a sidewalk would come around with curbing. So it's raised and it would continue to be raised away from, away from traffic, somewhat protected, but that seems to be protected. That retaining wall has prevented what would be a typical corner. And so under, under the permit, if, 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 the, if you know, Jim's right, if, if everything works out fine and Arby's agrees to, to allow it to happen, that retaining wall would get adjusted and the sidewalk would be constructed, um, you know, as you typically see on a corner within, within, within a roadway intersection. Somebody, somebody, somebody actually walking around a corner has to actually get around that retaining wall is theoretically sort of it's, it's at, a, at a place where it's flush at the same same elevation as the roadway and so there are two pedestrian signal heads put in it, it, i don't even know if they get juiced technically but you would push the button it would theoretically stop traffic from turning around that corner so that you could then kind of walk to the intersection to get around the corner it is quite frankly a very goofy situation um, and it and was identified as part of the master plan of like this has to get changed. And so I think we all hope. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, we all hope that that the rights can be acquired and and the typical quarter can be done. I still say that long term, you know, removal of the right turn lane, you know, as per the master plan and as per additional analysis, still makes sense as part of right sizing that roadway. Again, the master plan really looked at trying to improve you know, the, the roadway for everybody that uses it. And with it on bike, on foot, um, you know, thinking about slowing traffic as best as possible. And so um, that's still the long term vision, you know, that the community has for that, you know, for that, for that corner. Okay. So you. to follow up, I'm seeing a safety issue. Well, right that's now, possible. right now, you hit a button just like you would if you cross the main street in Brunswick. Yeah. Wait it's for the, good. wait for the little white figure to show up and tell you you can now. Across six feet of street. All right, I gotta go look at this when I'm down there. You, next you, time. Literally, you literally that that little wall. Do it safely. 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 I don't know what the problem is. I hope it gets solved, but it doesn't seem like a very yeah. hard thing to. His problem is if it's them like, being responsible. Then no, it's no, we're we're okay with that, but we are we can't them. get right of way. We cannot purchase right away. Right. So it's being kind of put on us to to wait for the right of way, and if it doesn't, then we have to worry. You know, and Tom's saying we can we can shut down that lane. I'm fine with that. If, if you guys want to take a lane out to get a sidewalk to get three steps out of the thing, but well, that sounded a little weird to me. For, none, none of us are traffic engineers. No. So, so we've got a good in the, the Thompson Fairwall oh. Road plan. Mm -hmm. right. Two, and, and honestly, those you know the two left lanes are backed up well yeah. past that uh oh. that that green line. Those two right lanes, right you're you know. Right. There's very, very few people up there. So yeah, I just so don't I think want it's to have a store bill and I don't want to have a store bill and this us not having a resolved of how to handle this for three steps in the pavement that's been there since the mall was built. And being on hook. And it's and it's right. you know. 
I write a, rather write a check and say, you know, if, when the town gets right away, go ahead and build it. But I just want to have some help for that that one item. I mean, totally that's not all. I don't think I. We've had, we've basically bent yeah. over and done the, everything that's been asked. We've, we've yeah. tried to, to address it. And, and Can you done. clarify again? You had a suggestion um, when you first started the presentation in terms of amending or adding a condition for this particular purpose, whether it was the town's make reasonable overtures to acquire the easement within a year and a half. If that solves the issue here, let's just add something like that to the condition. Yeah, and, and we just have to work with with um, Randy Ilian at the, the DOT on his letter because it has it, been finalized. It, it sounds like at least Kate has signaled that things are going in a positive direction. Yeah. So it seems that that signal plus a reasonable condition would address the issue. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping that five thousand dollars doesn't stop a thirty million dollar no. project. You know, that's, that's. I, I don't think anyone would think, think that would be reasonable. So. Right. <laughs> and, and Tom, I, we want to work with you. We just want to have, have some options in case we get bogged down. Yeah, I, I think we can, Jim. I, 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 you know, again, we don't, we don't want to stop the project either. I don't think that's the intent of anything. Like, so I think we can work on this. Good. So did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to go through a, a couple <laughs> items. There were a few outstanding items on the um, kind of the draft uh, conditional write-up. One was on page uh, seven, item number seven, bullet number three, no outdoor storage is shown. There was actually an outdoor, there was an outdoor display and sales area for seasonal sales. They do you know, um, annuals in, in the spring, plantings and whatnot. It's on it's on the uh, nine twenty plans. I just didn't want to be there. Uh, any misconception that they're across through that. Yeah, it's uh, it's identified on the plan, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was there. We could cross through that. Yeah, and and since Tom and I like butting heads, I wanted to talk about the two top bullets on page six. Um, we have. Since the beginning, we had a straw vote back the last time we were before the board. You know, one was sidewalk along the frontage because we felt it couldn't go anywhere. Staff has asked that that be placed. Um, Tom asked for it to be placed. We said, fine, we're, you know, we'll do the sidewalk. We don't think it will ever be connected to anything. I just want to be on the record that, that we don't want to have any liability for someone walking down the sidewalk and crossing the street where they shouldn't be crossing. So we're going to build it as per the plan, but I just want to be on the record that this is a town requirement and it is what it is. We're going to put lighting on it, but it's going to be a sidewalk to nowhere on the south side. But, but the plans show a crosswalk across. Uh, there's a crosswalk at, at Midway, and there's two cro there's four crosswalks around the roundabout. But we're carrying it even further towards Winter Street, and it terminates just in. But isn't there a crosswalk? There's a isn't there a sidewalk across no, the street? No, that would be mid block, and, and so it's just a sidewalk. It's it's there for future connections to another sidewalk, and. We're fine with that. I just want to be on the record that that's a town request, not not so it's where it ends. Um, the two top bullets, um, and the reason I brought that up is we had a right in, right out. We took that out. The town asked for a decel lane on the right end. Then, then the town asked for it to be, or the state asked for it to be removed. We've been changing the plans. The center island, we had a straw vote on um, the landscaping linear islands. <laughs> That sidewalk's been expanded to 10 feet. So that whole island got expanded by five, made us redesign the whole site all the way to the, um, the right in entrance. Um, the sidewalk, obviously. Which is, has been done. And that's yeah, and we've agreed to basically that. everything. My, my point is that I'm actually trying to take a stand finally and, and say, I, I really, there's two top bullets. One is um, a landscaped island. And I don't know if you can get it up here for me, yeah. Doug. Um, there's just two areas where we have cut throughs. That, that I've, I've done about 40 market basket sites. And, and I think that this is a rather rather than a, than a gotta have, just a wanna have. So you're referring, Jim, just to be clear for everyone here, these are the comments from Tom Erico's traffic peer review yeah. about the end islands and pedestrian walkway, those two bullets on page six. Right, the two top. Is mine different than yours? Or is it written on your on page page six on your memo? Yeah, yeah, it's on page six. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. So we're 
Yeah. 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 Zoom in. It's a little, it's actually hard to explain what's being discussed. Okay. Or in case I told yeah. Okay. So, so what Tom is asking for is now how do I get the um Okay. So what Tom's asking for is another landscape island right here because he feels that this is unsafe cutting through. And he wants to, to bracket that with another island here. And he wants to do the other, he's also requesting we do the same thing here and here to bracket that cut through. In, in my opinion, it's a safe situation. If those were two handicapped spaces, you wouldn't have a, a block off. It's 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 a way to cross across it. If we add that island, we're losing spaces right near our door, and it's hand shoveling and hand work where we can plow that right now and take care of it and have it maintained. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying it's it's unnecessary. And I, I'd like to request that the board reconsider those two items. <laughs> Is there something else that could go there that's smaller, like a rail or something that would? A rail will get, just, if I put bollards in there, they'll just get nailed by the plow. And okay. It, okay. It's, so, so that's fine, but that's why we have our peer reviewer. Well, I understand. So, so Tom, I guess since he's questioning a couple of things we've asked for, but you've already accommodated that on the plan, is that correct? No, we have not. You have not. Okay. No, have there's not. there's some there's some amendments on the plan that, that need to be done. Site lighting is one, landscaping, we have to have a peer review. One of the, the conditions is peer review for that. Right. That's peer review for that. <clears throat> if if you're gonna to defer directly to Tom, then I, then I, I, have, what, I, I have no because he's not he's not gonna change his opinion, and that's fine. I just want to talk to the board. Like I've designed 40 market basket sites over the year. It's not necessary. I think it's overreach. And I it's a it's the one thing I've asked for over a year of talking to the town. So okay. if you choose to have me put it in, I guess we'll put it in. But yeah. thank you. I'd still like to hear Tom's comments. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen again. I think it's, it's easier for me to explain it if you can see the, the site plan. Do you see? And again, I don't know if this is the most current site plan, but it's pretty current. It came from September, so I don't think it's changed that much. So, so really, I think what Jim's talking about are two locations. One is in this area here, and he's right. It's near near the entrance to the store. But oh, ultimate. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, the screen wasn't loading for a second. You're good now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, so you know, the first location is here. And um, Jim's right, it's, it, you, you know, I'm suggesting that these two parking spaces, this one and this one become raised like the abutting side here. So a raised portion would be here protecting pedestrians as they go from the sidewalk. This is a sidewalk if you're in Midway and you cross into the site and that there are two basic ways to get into the site. One is via the roundabout and one is via the crosswalk at Midway. You can come up this side and walk on the main drive and then you come into the site. And so my experience with, with parking, large parking lots with developments is that people generally don't park very efficiently. And so in this case, somebody pulling into these parking spaces most likely <laughs> will encroach into this area where pedestrians are supposed to walk. And so in my opinion would be if you're trying to provide the safest, best accommodation for pedestrians, you would you would protect that space by providing a raised area. It, it requires loss of two parking spaces, so there's a loss of parking spaces. Um, but I felt like, given the size of the parking lot and the number of parking spaces on site, that wasn't detrimental to the project. Similarly, I suggest the same thing in the middle of the parking lot where this pedestrian aisle exists. Again, just just basically mirroring what's happening on one side of it to the other side of it. So again, it's fully protected. You're not going to get somebody just basically parking in a weird, you know, there, you know, it physically prevents anybody from, from encroaching into that pedestrian area. That's, that's my recommendation in terms of providing sort of best practices for how to, you know, maintain safe, safe movements for pedestrians. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> you have other items that you'd like to present? No. Okay. 
that we didn't talk about this? We can talk about this. Yeah. They don't have anything like that at Hanford, correct? Um, at all. We don't even have a pedestrian going through. You know, I don't. I don't even understand why they have that. But, and I'm. I'm gonna absolutely back him because I know these guys have bent over backwards to be here in Thompson, and we should be welcoming them. And I want to see this project go through. I'm being very honest about how I feel. But if this is something where all of the experience that he has building these market baskets needs to be recognized. And I just think it's overkill. That's my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the board feels, but. I, I think Hanford is not a good example. Okay. <laughs> it, was right. not, it, was not, it was not built to the standards we have. Look at so, Brunswick. Look at the Brunswick one. Brand new. They don't have anything like that. And I don't think people are going to park on, on that any way, any way that they would park on a handicapped place. And if they do, they should get a ticket. So that's it. I, I I tend to we tend to defer to our our peer town peer reviewers and uh, especially on things where they call out safety. Um, you got I, I, I agree. You, you know you've got more than double, close to triple what the uh, parking requirements that are that we have in the town. Or you know, and I know you guys at Market Basket prefer to have even more. But I think four fewer spots um, is not unreasonable given that you have 430 spots. And I'm not so sure you're hand shoveling those. You, might, you guys are going to be hand shoveling the whole, whole the sidewalks. You're probably going to have a you know, little machine to, to blow them anyway. So I'm not sure that's a, a valid um, argument for it. So I mean, I, I think Tom's good point. I don't, it would actually look pretty good at the middle part. It might match up what you've got on the other side, which I assume is there because it has some kind of safety issues too. So. Okay, so we can, <coughs> right now we can keep going back and forth on. No, I know, that, and, and you know, sidewalk, but I guess I no moss, no moss, I give. That, that, okay, that. but I'm telling you, he's not stamping the plans. We have an engineer that's stamping the plans. They're, <laughs> they're good designs. Yes, there's always a better mouse but I just think that we have, we have done everything we can with the town, and I'm asking for one little thing, and I can't get it. It's a little frustrating. A little I, frustrating. I, but but so we've done. We're done. I'd like to mention one thing that we have done, and um, you know I don't want to get into the details of the parking waiver that has been pulled off the table, but there are a number of things on that waiver that we discussed in November and March that are not being talked about now, and that is that we kind of changed our definition of requirement that is in the code. The code talks about 90% of the required spaces, right? not the proposed spaces. And the required spaces for this parcel, based on our code, are 160 spaces, which would be 144 spaces in that front area. Okay, you guys have gone through a lot of um, extent to minimize the view, the, the view of that parking lot and I commend it. I think the landscape plan is fantastic. I, I think the, the levels and the views you provided have kind of minimized what the parking lot looks like from the road are great. But I, you know, I, I, we aren't pushing on that waiver. Um, though if you request, we'd probably give it to you anyway. But um, I, you know, I think I think we're working pretty pretty well with with you guys on this, and I think it'd be, it's going to be a fantastic project. I, I'm not sure why we're talking about four spaces as much as we are. Right. Okay. So what I'd like to do, at least for now, right, is move on see if there's any questions from the board uh, of what you've just seen, right? Any <clears throat> clarification that you need. Uh, and I need to open up for a public hearing. I'm not sure we have a lot of. We have um, one member of the public and one journalist. All right. So we do have a couple people uh, standing by that may have some questions. Um, and anyone here uh, that might have some questions? I guess why don't I go with the board first? Um, we have questions or comments that want to be brought up now. Uh, we do have the architect online too, if you have any architectural questions. Thank you. Um, I could, I could, um, 
the, uh, the the roundabout. As I understand it, this this type of layout with traffic movement with the roundabout integrated with the store and the parking lot. Uh, there's another one. And is it Southern Maine or is it in uh, Bedford, New Hampshire yeah. has a single access with a roundabout. And it's very, so very similar. Same size. Yeah, same. Okay. Um, and as, as far as design and operation of that facility, there's been no issues. Is there anything you can take away from that facility that applies here in terms of? No, I think that, that everybody's pretty happy with the way it, it turned out. Okay. That's really all I have. Yeah, I've been through it. It works, does it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it. Well, because it's, it's a roundabout, there's no signal to, to allow traffic to queue up, so there's a constant flow. So you can, with a with a single exit, mm -hmm. it works. Right. So I think just locally, we've seen. Yeah. Whether it's on Congress or over in Bath, and there's a few others that are in yeah. the, the roundabouts that actually been very effective. That's why I asked the question: It's a roundabout, not a roadway. Right. We don't want to roll it. Okay. Sorry. Um, so questions on this side. Um, uh, well, I, I do for Tom. You can you hear me, Tom? You're on mute, Tom. You yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm no expert on traffic studies uh, at all, but it looks like that the traffic study at least when I was reading it, and this is the impression that I got, that there was really uh, not a lot of look at the uh, Thompson Fair Mall Road intersection with Winter Street, that it was kind of looked at saying, well, we really don't have a whole lot of information about this intersection, and therefore, yeah, it's probably going to be okay. Is, is that a Fair assessment, or did I misread something on that? I, I think I think you probably didn't, didn't get it all. I mean, they they did they did quite a bit of analysis at, at at the Winter Street intersection. They one they collected current information, traffic volume data. Um, then they loaded traffic from the Market Basket project, and then they modeled it. They actually did a what we call a capacity analysis, a sin traffic model. To see how it would function, um, so they did. They did pretty pretty standard traffic modeling analysis, and then lastly, they did, as I indicated, they did a previously they did do a warrant analysis to determine if if um, stops if 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 it made sense to make it a multi way stop intersection, adding stop signs on Winter Street, and so they did quite a bit of work um, at that location. I think basically maybe that maybe what how you I'll, I'll say Reddit was that there really wasn't much they could do outside of, you know, that, you know, when you have a, a you know, a, a three-way intersection with a stop sign, the next incremental sort of improvement is, um, you know, thinking about maybe, you know, multi-way stops and then signalization, you know, once the multi-way stop conclusion was sort of eliminated, there's not much else they can do. Now, I should note they are improving sight lines. They're going to do some clearing. Um, um, you know, looking looking to the right as you're coming out of Thompson Fairwall Road. So they're doing some um some work in terms of improving sight lines, but um they they did a they did a um they did a lot of work there. And, and so um, before oh. you also met, you mentioned the warrant, <clears throat> and I'm not sure I'm using the right terminology, but anyway, when they looked at that, they there was some indication, I think you said that they were going to do that uh, going forward as well. Just to reassess it, is that correct? That's right. So, so one of the one of the conditions within the DOT traffic movement permit is to do a monitoring study of that intersection um, following occupancy of the store. So they'll go back to that intersection. They'll collect additional new data with the market basket traffic in the intersection, and then go back evaluate that that warrant again to see if the stop signs are needed. Okay, thanks. Go okay. ahead. I'm sorry, Larry. Oh, that's fine. Uh, so was the assumption made that most of the traffic uh, leaving and going to Market Basket would be coming from the 196 end as opposed to Winter Street end? Uh, more traffic would come from the 196 end. I don't remember the exact distribution. I mean, they had a reasonable amount of traffic going to Winter Street. I mean, anybody, I mean, I mean, you you all know Thompson. As well as anybody, but you know, people are going to go to Winter Street to head towards 
Brunswick or you know other parts of the community to the you know sort of to the northeast and so um, they had a reasonable amount of, of traffic going on Winter Street. We went through um, you know a number of meetings with DOT to make sure that those percentages made sense and I think they landed on a pretty reasonable number. Okay, because I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the, I already know the River Road in, into Winter Street obviously at the railroad track you know they uh, changes. Uh, is already a shortcut uh, for anybody coming from the Lisbon Falls, the Badis, you know, yep. that, that direction. Uh, and I know that already people are, you go over the railroad tracks, uh, supposedly it goes down to a slower speed, but people are doing 40 when they come up to that intersection. Sure, sure. Yeah, they're, they're going fast. Uh, as well as people not 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 assuming anybody coming out Winter Street to River Road is is actually going to go straight instead of turning into Top Fair Mall. I'm surprised there haven't been more accidents there. But okay, I, I think that answers my question, Tom. But uh, and I saw that it was supposed to be like a six month evaluation afterward. That's correct. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions from the board? All right, seeing on open up to a public hearing. Anyone in the audience have any questions, <clears throat> comments, concerns that they'd like to express to the board? And do we have anybody? Um, if anyone on Zoom would like to make a comment, please raise your hand and I will allow you to talk. Well, not on Zoom, but I <laughs> well, you were here, so come up, but please. Raise. Please identify yourself and not that we don't know you. It's all right. Mark Ponziani, I'm a trustee of the sewer district. And there are some things that uh, that were quite concerned that we have with the sewer district. Uh, we have met with the gentleman who's putting this together and uh, he knew where we were coming from. And he took notes and we had a great breakfast. But before I get into an awful lot of those, I need a little leeway. So a, before you do, let me just ask because Kate sent out something today and there's an additional condition. Yeah. I assume that that's as a result of your Is that to dig the stub up? When yes. first get started. Yep. That's good. Yep. Okay. And I'll explain why. Okay. So go ahead. I just. Just want to make sure that we we're all in the same discussion. Well, that's one of them. There's okay. other things on here that, that were a little bit in question here, too. But I'm going to talk. Hey, we're going to lose you, I understand. And from the sewer district point of view, thank you very much. You and Stewie Cade and Kevin Overy worked very well. And you and I only had a chance a couple times to match up down the treatment plant <laughs> in wherever, but you're a loss to the path. Actually, I'm in it. On that set of plans, and the reason why we talked about why <clears throat> you can draw all you want, but that stub from the manhole into that property, maybe it's 50, 60 feet. We cannot guarantee that elevation of that stuff. And we explained it to them. And it is deep. When that road was built up through there, the you know, Crook of Hyatt from Portland, and there was a, it was filled in 20 feet. That manhole stacked up on top of them. I mean, so where you that's the key to this whole thing. The elevation of the building, you can't have the sewer running back. Sewer's got to run to that street. So, you know, somebody's going to look kind of funny if, if he can't get that sewer to the street. He's going to have to either lift the building up or going to have to pump it. He's going to have to do something. So we asked, was there an alternative? Now, when we get our first set of plans, we made red comments on everything, okay? And this is the first time now when we get the 
new set. The stuff that we had put down here is an on here. And that's what we were disappointed with because we thought that we made some nice suggestions. And one change that's on here, Ronnie can help me in this one, but 005 is you lay sewer pipe no shallower, no flat than 005. Okay, Danny can too. But that was changed. And our engineer said, you do not change that, OO Park. But the new set of plans, in the middle of that long hall across that parking lot, it's changed. It's a little bit flat. So hopefully when they dig that stuff up, they can figure it that it's going to work. So that was one. Um, and I was glad to hear about the trees because, again, the water district, same thing. The water district talked about <clears throat> trees not on those lines because, you know, you, you got to maintain this stuff. Somebody's going to have to. Now, even though this isn't going to be owned by the Tops and Sewage, we still have say in how it gets done because they want to hook into it. Now, if they had their own system, the hell with it. We would step back and let it go. So that's another reason why we're considering an off lot, that we want it done in our way. Now, we made a suggestion to them too. Now, now there's some history here. When that road was built, they, they got into real snotty blue clay. Not only when they built the road, when Ronnie built the parking lot up to Smitty's, he found out that this snotty clay, when they built the bypass in the road by the bridges, Sergeant Barry from Machina had to had a hell of a time getting it out of there. So that clay is in that area. So we asked for the boring that he drilled now. We still would like to. We have a full geotech, we can get you that. Yeah. I, we, I didn't know you'd ask for it. Yeah. Well, we did. But no biggie. We just wanted to see what you kind of found out. So that was that was one of the other little things we kind of wanted to go in. Um, just to see where that blue clay is. So we made a recommendation. And I can remember exactly what I said. I said, look, I'm not holding a gun to your head. But I said, we suggest that you wrap this <clears throat> piping with stone and, and heavy road fabric. Keeps it from settling, keeps it from changing. Because when the mall road was built, when Conover did that down through there, three times they had to change the piping in that section because it settled, it moved because of this fourth order. So did we say you had to do it? No, but we sure recommend that you do it. So, when, when when you look at the plan, you see where our comments were, but but now you don't see you know you were kind of losing a little bit. And and again, you would see Stewie K here, but Stewie's got some real serious issues in saying it's got it. But uh, well not the same, but anyway, that's why I came. But this is a great so far what we've dealt with them, they've been very good. And uh, these aren't serious issues. But you ought to know the one in here. And when Conover came to town and did all of that work up through there, they brought in Home Depot, <clears throat> they brought in Target, all of that. They changed the roads. But the coordination that was done, we've gotten away from that. And it's too bad because. It looked to me as though on that plan, the state's getting all their money. The only thing we're going to get out of it is a few tax dollars out of it. But, but the state's got so many listings up there, it's pretty hard to keep hitting them in the wallet, hitting them in the wallet. But, but before, we always got together all everybody that was dealing with the developer. We, we, we dealt with him and uh, with the plan that came with us. And, and it was, it, it, it made it. Once you make your case to them why you want some things, 
Um, they have to answer the people and they'll go back and ask their questions and their board then will approve it or not approve it or whatever. But but the more that you bring the town in on the water district, the sewer district, you know where everybody's coming from. That that you will go a mile, go so much further when when you're all there and you have that opportunity to share. But the word that you were looking for was eminent domain. Don't forget that. <laughs> Thank you. Let's don't talk about eminent domain right now. <laughs> um, so did, Actually, the public hearing is still open. Did you want? Did you want to make a comment now or a little bit later after? I see if there's any other comments. Oh, wait for a All right. All right. Is there anyone? Uh, we do have a hand raised on Zoom. Um, you'll have to unmute yourself, sir, so we can hear you. And state your name. And please state your name for the record. Edward Ezard, at. Uh... Deer Run on uh, on Peaks Island, and uh, Deer Run. Uh, I just have a quick question. What would be the hopeful result of this meeting? It's a conditional permit, is what I've heard. What would that allow if it was granted? That's. I'm just trying to figure out where this, what the end result of this meeting might be. Thank you. I'm not sure where conditional comes from. Uh, this isn't a conditional. This is they have proposed this, um, and I guess we could go through the whole thing. But this is a site plan approval, so it would be a pro an approval for them to move forward. He might be referring to the conditions at the end of the conditions. Oh, so there, conditions. yeah. When we do approve a site plan, it is approved with conditions, and I think that's what he must be referring to. Okay, Meg. So. At the end of this result, the end of this meeting, you might give them permission to proceed with the whole plan. Is that correct? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other <clears throat> Zoom questions or comments? Anyone else on Zoom want to make any comments? All right. Anyone here in the audience? Questions, concerns, comments? All right, unless, I think I'm gonna close the public hearing. However, if after you heard what they have to say, you want to speak again, I'll let you speak again, sir. Mm -hmm. The public hearing is now closed. So you, you had a couple comments? All right. I, and, and maybe Tom Sassier, if you wanted to make a few comments on that as well. Just just to uh, talk about the sewer district, I did just look at the plans and yeah, there was a couple that we went below zero zero five and yeah, we, we wouldn't do that. Um that we'll we'll fix those. Okay. Um and I I just saw it's like I never go less than zero zero five on a sewer plan. Okay. So, so and, and again if it, if we have to dig a little bit of that stuff out, we'll dig a little of that stuff out and get a little bit lower. All right, so you, you already have a condition as far as yep. the yep. test, but you, you know, dealt with that, and you indicated you were going to provide the boring. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide them the geotech, okay. right, the, whatever they want. Okay, whatever they want. Good. You can raise the invert out of the building. Tom, so did you want to add anything to that? No, I think it's pretty important just to get that test pit done and see what we're dealing with uh, okay. as soon as possible in the process. Okay, good. All right, but as far as the way it's worded as a condition, you're good with that, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So I, I'm back to the board. Um, any additional questions, comments, or whatever, or are we in a position to go ahead and, and make a motion? Um, well, I think I, I would just add, just reading through all the materials and so forth, but I just feel like it's been a, a very comprehensive process back and forth with staff reviews. Um, you know, I think the applicant's been accommodating. I think it's a good project. And certainly, there's always going to be traffic concerns whenever you have a big project like this. Uh, but I think overall, I think the kind of the, the peer review process and staff process, I think it's worked out well from what I can see. 
other not to get back to the parking issue with the planter. <laughs> However, if there were a compromise and if there was an idea, I think it would at least be worth bringing it up. I don't know if there's something else yeah. that could be done to separate that. And I just want to say, I am the shopper in my family and I do shopping for other people. And when you go into a parking lot, I do not go across little pedestrian parking spaces. I know that that's wonderful to have, but most people, when they come out of the grocery store, beeline it for their car. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say. So, so my, my only, and please go ahead and that. be really quick. And I think, Tom, I've, I've been thinking about it. I just don't like the idea of two islands. So, what I think I'll, I'd like to do would be to make those double wide and handicap ramp up across and back down. So you're actually entering a landscape area rather than having pavement across on both of those. I think that should probably address your concern, but basically you don't go across the striped pavement. You basically enter a sidewalk, go across and exit the sidewalk and come to a crosswalk. I, I would be fine with that. So I, I think that's better than having two islands yeah. 10 feet apart. So on that, um, and I also want to mention that, you know, when we started this, you had a planner and you're an assistant planner and Kate has done a really good job. It's a lot to absorb. And she's been a good sport dealing with me. Um, <laughs> I can understand. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> for a single building, it's a complicated project. Yeah. Yeah. She's been a great work with her and fun. So. This is a very complex project. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Well, I. One thing I, I think would be worth doing is uh, I do have some I have some questions. Sure. They're they're based on uh, the individual waivers, and I think we've got to take the waivers before we do any other motion mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, maybe we can take each of the waivers um, as a group. Um, yeah. Ask right. questions yeah. we may have. Then so maybe whomever. So maybe we'll, we'll take. I'm going to talk in a move, so I'll come up and okay. try to give an answer. If I can. Um, let's start with, with let's start with the lighting waiver. Yeah, that's the first one on the list that we got. So, um, my my main question is is we we didn't see a lighting plan. I know we have the waiver. There is a lighting plan submitted. There um, is. Yeah, but it was in a previous original. Yeah. So yeah. The original. Okay. So what we're doing on that is we've added the sidewalks along the frontage. By the regulations, we're required to have lighting on that. Um, my site lighting guy really has kind of gone, he's gone silent on me since our last meeting, and then I've been hammering him, believe me. Um, the issue is that there's there's some very definite requirements, some some brackets that the, the lighting has to be in as far as um, how how dark or how light they can be. And it's almost impossible with the nature of site lighting to, to be able to nail those. So there's going to be some areas where it might be a little hotter, which is a little brighter than, than the regulations. You know, there's a 10-foot candle requirement. Then there's some areas that might be a little bit darker, but we're going to meet the intent of the regulations. So the, the Kate wrote it up as saying that we have our designer. We're going to we're going to give the town funds to have a site lighting expert to just review it and make sure it meets the intent of the regulations. But it's really hard when you have like, you know, at an entrance, it has to be between five and 10 foot candles. At this location, it has to be between, you know, 0.6 and 0.5. There's always going to be a little bit of difference on that. And we're going to point those out on this plan that we're working on right now. And then the town's going to hire somebody to do it and say, basically, give the nod that we've met the requirements, uh, you know, as far as the intent of what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chair, for the benefit of the board, um, site lighting engineers are hard to come by, but we are in the process of trying to retain one. Um, we're not, we haven't retained uh, that individual yet, but Tom Saucier has recommended an individual, and we are um, trying to engage that individual to conduct that analysis. And, and that's the reason it was written the way it was written here. To have them finalize things and get it reviewed with an right. expert in that arena. Right. I, I just um, typically we would provide some suggestions on that to a plan. So I just wanted to bring that up. And um, obviously, none of us are lighting engineers here either. Um, 
but I, you know, I wonder if, if part of the hot versus safety, um, you know, have, obviously the goal is to have safe light. And, and, yeah, and, and that's and the, that's all. Some, some of this is actually right. less than what we'd like right. to have. Like the average you have in the parking lot is is not as bright as we'd like to have. And and but at the same token, you you depending on the the, the height of your light fixtures right. will will allow you you know the number of fixtures and the height of the fixtures depends on how hot or or average the light can be. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the, the our lighting engineer can work yeah. with you yeah. on you know finding that sweet spot where maybe they're not quite as high as you want them, and you have a couple more and can diffuse the light um, away from those hot spots. So we we found that that uh, a 30 foot height average, so a 27 and a half foot pole on a 30 inch base mm -hmm. is is the best. But we've had sites where they're under power lines. And you have to you have to minimize them to fifteen. You end up with a sea of holes, it, and it, it just is not a it's not a good look. Even though it's more consistent light on the pavement because it's lower and you have them tighter, it, having lower poles it, it, there's a compromise there. At some point, you, you don't want to have seventy poles on a site. You want to have thirty. And and I think we through all the years that we've done this, we've hit our sweet spot. And these are very low profile poles. They're all like dark sky compliant. And we've got a very nice decorative pole, but I think we have to work with the town on what they want to help by the sidewalks and around the roundabout, just so that it, it matches what it is. And I, have I sent that to you, the detail of that? Because I can, I can send you what our typical pedestrian pole is. So yeah, you can see, just, just so you can maybe give it to your consultant when you get yeah. there. But I hear you, I hear you, but I, but there is, there is a point where even if we had all the low poles and everything, we still wouldn't be able to stay within that bracket because it's so definite. And, and this, there's always going to be some areas that we're not going to be able to meet. Those are real questions. I have on that. Yeah. Okay. People do. Right. So that was the first waiver. <laughs> do you want to talk all three or take them one at a time? Well, why don't we take them one at a time? Okay. Okay. I can make a motion. Well, okay. Let's go. Raise up the I guess the question I, I have is, um, you know, I guess I'm maybe generally somebody who used to be on the board, but is some of this still half baked as far as you know what the plans are? Uh, I mean, I'm not opposed to the project, but it's just like in reading through, it's like, okay, we're going to get a site plan on uh, uh, you know, peer review lighting engineer, and then another one has somebody else, uh, and uh, so I'm just wondering, is this something that we should be working and voting on this evening or get some additional plans submitted so we can actually see what we're voting on? I, I guess I'll give my opinion. I think they provided a lot of information and there's been a lot of peer review of a lot of information that Correct. provided, right? Correct. Um, this is a very specific arena, right? And so in order to make sure we are doing it correctly, we thought it was important to engage a lighting engineer to peer review to do that portion of it, right? So, and as you know, typically in most of, I won't say, I shouldn't say most, I just say in a number of the, uh, the motions we make, we still ultimately default to um, Saucier and the peer review on um, technical issues that they're still working on, right? So, because this is a larger project, it probably has more than we would see in some of the other projects. But I, I think that those are fine moving forward, right? But I guess I, I'm not the only speaker here. So, but, you know, from my perspective, I don't think it's cafe. Okay. Well, I know the times we've been recently, we've been uh, coincided about some projects too, as far as how it translated into reality. Versus on which, paper. remember, and, and I'm not the expert on that portion, but that's what Rod had brought up with a couple of projects where, when it got out to the construction meetings and so forth that they did, there was a little bit of a misinterpretation there, right? which I think he's put a few, and Kate has put a few, I'll call them, you know, bootstraps and whatever to, to try to avoid yeah. that, which is, which is, it was a real issue. I agree. Yeah. Guardrails. Right. So, 
I have a question just off the top the of my head. It was tree clearing. Yeah. How many market baskets are there in Maine? Two. And how many in Massachusetts? Probably forty plus fifty. Okay. So, anything else, or is this store going to be twenty-four hours? Or no. Now, no, when no. Hannaford years ago, they redid their lighting because they had a bunch of elderly people were having trouble walking through the parking lot at night. So they they put brighter lights, but after the store closes. They shut a lot of them down to keep it. Yeah, they do security lighting. They, they that's going to be in the program that they will they will you know essentially shut down half the lighting or, or dim it to half level. Okay. All right. So I'm good. Is the board good? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I I take Larry's point. I think we we doubled that with a number of projects. I think this is probably. We'll, we'll talk about the landscape waiver next. I expect we'll have more answers to at least my questions. I don't know who else has questions, but um, I mean, in this one, I think we defer to the the expert um, anyway um, on this one. So I'm I'm pretty comfortable with it myself. I think it's a valid point that you know we need to bring up more often than not. I I, I understand the term half baked, but and I've been called worse, but. This, we are getting into like the really nitty gritty details. It's a guarantee of what you have in your mind on this. It's not going to change from that. There's going to be some really minor things that will happen, but you, what you're, you've seen, the renderings, it's going to be very close to that. This is like talking about the, the diameter of a pipe underground. You know, if you can get it right, it's not something anybody else is going to be bothered with. It's going to be done right and properly done. Yeah. Well, I actually didn't mean half big. <laughs> uh, it was just that that was a phrase that some other members of the board uh, you would, the point across. Would, yeah. would re relate to because of a prior member. Uh, I'd say you're 95 percent big. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I ask why there's how many market baskets are in the New England area, it's because we're not dealing with a one off or somebody that we've never dealt with before, or not not us, but Market Basket's name and their reputation and all the other stores that they've developed. I think yeah. that's why I don't feel hesitant at all by moving forward. And in response to that, I've dealt with a lot of Market Baskets in different locations and remember when it was just the mm -hmm. That's That's a while ago. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Um, I move that Ford Grant. Uh, waiver request for 1759F1, 1759G2, 1759H4 on the condition of a peer reviewed lighting engineer is retained to work with the applicant and town staff on the lighting plan that meets the intentions of the ordinance while addressing the site specific concerns. I'll second that. Okay, did you? Did you get what you needed? Yeah. Did that, did that say at the applicant's expense? Yeah, and I just want to make sure you start the motion said that. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed. All right. It's unanimous. Thank you. So, second item uh, landscaping standards. And I know, Scott, you said you had some uh, questions. You want me to start? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Okay. Um, no, you're welcome to do this. <laughs> but Scott, go ahead. Okay. So on, on this, I saw the updated landscape plans that were submitted on the 30th of September. Um, those will be the plans that are submitted and discussed with the landscape engineer? Or um, Yeah. I, I, the, the issue on here is, is it's really more three counts and types or anything like that. Um, it, it, it's like the first 175-10 C1, you have kind of conflicting requirements in your regulations. We're being asked to save trees within the front setback, but we're also being asked to plant <clears throat> street trees. We're saving the trees on either side where those big ravines are, and that leaves only a certain amount of our frontage that we can plant the street trees. That, that equals one every 30 feet, and it actually comes up to be 17. So 
we're using the existing vegetation to meet the street tree requirement mm -hmm. because you don't want to plant trees in the woods. I, I guess that's as, as simple as I can put it on that one. Um, then there's a, another discussion about um, trees in, in the parking lot. And because of the, the light configuration, we have light poles that are in landscape islands and we don't want to plant canopy trees underneath those. So what we're doing is we're, we're not planting them there, but we're making that count around the edges of the parking lot. So we're, we're, we're not taking trees out of the design, we're just putting them where they won't interfere with site light. So that's that's the second one. Um, uh, the the linear island we talked about the last time we were here that actually was a twenty foot five foot island with a five foot sidewalk. So we had ten feet of landscaping on either side. Staff asked for it to, and also the traffic engineer asked for it to be a multi use path. So now it's ten feet. So we widen that to 30 feet. So there's 10 feet of landscaping on either side of a 10 foot sidewalk going down the middle, middle of that linear aisle. Um, uh, yeah, so the next one's the street trees in the landscape island. We just relocated those to other locations. <laughs> um, the, the next one is the 80% of the, the trees in the front setback. And we've identified on the plan where the trees would be saved. We just didn't do a survey. We're just saving the trees where we're, we're not doing the disturbance and, and maximizing that as much as we possibly can. And I think that covers, is that all? Yeah, I, I mean, my, my question is just that was that plan that was submitted on the 30th, the close to final? I mean, my, yeah, main, I, I, my main thing, I, I agree with your points here. Yeah. Um, I think we're, I think staff is just, sorry to interrupt, I think staff is just looking to say is is that reasonable how we're addressing these and we're going to have a landscape architect say yes or no or maybe you, maybe you plant a lower more decorative tree underneath the light poles that will will allow light to go a lot, uh, through I, you know everybody has a different opinion um, but I, I it's going to be darn close to what what's on that plan it yeah. might be a tree shifted here and there right what I'm really getting at is that first one which I agree with you that the 17 Elm Street the, the, 17 trees planted out front is a valid approach given mm -hmm. you're keeping the woods on the north and south side of the property. The landscape plan that was submitted on the 30th clearly defines what trees are staying. Yes. And that's not going to change. I should have no. more no. direct with my question. No, there is okay. there's no reason to change the plan. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, Thank you. Not specifically related to you, but it is specifically related to Past. Right. I think that so. we have had previous applicants where things have been all of a sudden the trees are gone. They're gone. Right. And, and you can't you can't put them back. Right. And we we really don't want that to happen, especially in this case. Well, they'd be, they'd they'd be in the wetlands buffer on those. Right. those. There'd, there'd be a lot more issues. No, you just the trees. You, you open up another whole issue. Yeah. Yes. That's, all right. <laughs> so, other questions? Are we ready for a motion? All right. Um, yes, let's see. I know I have one. I'm sorry. Um, I moved to the board finds that the waiver request for um, 175 10C1, 175 10B4, 175 10B5, 175 10B6, 175 10E2 are appropriate given the site constraints and the proposed layout on the condition that a peer reviewed landscape architect is retained at the applicant's expense to work with staff and the applicant to ensure the final landscape plan meets the intent of the ordinance while addressing site specific concerns. Second. All right, discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed, all right, it's unanimous, thank you. All right, so we are, that's it for wisdom. That's it. That's it for wisdom. Yeah. yeah. I, I do just want to note that one thing about the outdoor um outdoor sales and display. I just want to make sure that that's not not missed. So, thank you. Okay. 
Yeah. That's a typo. Some of you may have a version of the memo that has a typo in a number of conditions that got so helpfully caught. Um, so I have updated that, um, but I didn't want to confuse oh, everyone by yeah, having right. 10 versions of the memo. So it should read staff recommended conditions 1 to 26. Right. Yeah. And October 6th is the date of the memo. Yes. October 6th, not 5. Oh, yes, October 6th. Right, over. So, so is the second question. <laughs> Thank you for my team of proofreaders. <laughs> All right. So, we have any other we open answer questions for already, or are we going right to? If you want questions, sure. Thank okay. you. Actually, just one question. It follows up on what Larry had asked about before with the, the traffic report. Um, obviously, with the, the traffic mitigation uh, plan for the speed bumps and the, uh, the speed tables and the uh, uh, crosswalks on Winter Street, there's an acknowledgement that there's obviously going to be an increase in, in traffic. Uh, there is talking about the traffic from the west, but um, I'm, I'm a little more concerned about the traffic from the east. I know they're doing some adaptive, uh, there's money set aside to do uh, adaptive lighting at the, the Main Street, Elm, Elm Street light. Mm -hmm. uh, which is good to see. Um, but as we all know, that the traffic coming from Brunswick um, backs up quite a bit at that light. And I expect that the traffic at Winter Street and Main Street to take a right to Brunswick is going to back up further than it has in the past with, with this, because it, um, it, as the traffic report says, um, especially on Saturdays, there's a big increase uh, in traffic coming from there, but it shouldn't be as big an issue because the traffic on Main Street is better on Saturdays anyway. I just want to know what were those two intersections besides um, the adaptive lighting for, for Main Street? I, I know it's further away from your project. Um, were those looked at closely as far as what the potential traffic issues are um, for that right turn onto Main Street from Winter Street or the left turn onto Elm Street extension from heading north on, on Main Street? <laughs> Good evening, Randy Dunton with Gold Palmer. Thought I was going to get through the whole night without getting out of here. <laughs> and, um, and you really have the bullet on your right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're talking about the intersection of uh, Elm Street and Route 201, correct? Yeah, that intersection was looked at and capacity analysis was done. Um, you actually already had a project that was uh, going to happen there. And uh, what the applicant is doing is is uh, giving some extra money to uh, kind of boost that uh, already existing project. So, and with the advanced uh, traffic controller, it should work uh, better than than it does today. Mm -hmm. As but as far as you know, so it, it'll probably be a wash with additional traffic from the site and improvements. It'll probably work about the same. Okay. And, but as far as the right turn on Winter Street, as far as backing up there, there's anything, I mean, there's, there's little that can be done. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we looked at that and uh, there was a lot of discussion over that intersection, um, what could be done. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of um, great elevation hills and all that going on, closely spaced um, buildings to the intersection. So we talked about, you know, what could be done. Um, to improve the intersection and the advanced traffic controller was was kind of what everybody settled on as far as uh, mitigating the traffic. Go ahead. Okay. Well, following up on on that, of course, I know there's our uh, and Tom and uh, the two Tom, not that. Um, <laughs> anyway, with regard to traffic. I uh, had talked about the uh, fees going to uh, main DOT uh, for them to be able to do all of this. Do we have any guarantee that they'll actually do that? Or, um, will, I, it, or will it just go into some I can't copper speak, in the DOT? I can't speak for the DOT. Um, I know you can't. 
Um, my understanding is that there is a project um, kind of all set to go and that this money will be contributing towards that project. If there's an issue with that, we're on the same page as the town. We want that money to go to the traffic improvements that will help right. our clients get to the get to the building. So but doesn't the traffic we'll, movement we'll right. talk to DOT together. There was a kickoff meeting for that project yesterday. Oh, okay. There you go. So it appears to be happening. Okay. Because I mean they just had somebody about a couple of years ago doing something with the traffic lights at 196 and I-95 and trying to uh, make some sort of timing, I guess. I'm not sure, but it doesn't always work. Okay. All right. Anything else? I'm sorry, I have one more extremist question. That's why I write these things down. It has nothing to do with traffic. So. You have oh, I can sit down. Thank yeah. you. How many more pages? In your no, page? that's, a, that's the end of my page. I'm at the end of page number two. Um, and this one has to do with the uh, the snow and salt mitigation plan. Um, the I know they're they're not very big streams, but the one to the north is uh, we have a project for uh, impaired urban stream for that. The, the Tutsum Fair Mall area had to uh, make a few changes for salt use and and whatnot uh, to minimize the impact on that stream. Um, I think from looking at the the snow and um, removal plan that all of the, the snow will be kept on impervious surfaces and the meltwater will go into the stormwater treatment uh, facility that you have on site. So, right. so the salt um, will be mitigated. There won't be any, any leaching into. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And the salt plant itself will minimize salt though still meeting the safety yep, factors that, that everyone has okay all right are we going to talk about salt again no i, I you know we just <laughs> we know I, when you I get the salt too, right <laughs> i missed that one. No, oh you missed so that one yeah. that's good because it cool. also that puts it in the record too that's a good one thank you all right other questions all right are you but yeah, you formulating one um, yeah, just to kind of dovetail on. You can't keep know. writing the next one. You know, that, that goes on in the pad. <laughs> no, I was just curious with the traffic movement permit that kind of specifies the mitigation, correct? There's impact fees, but there's identified projects in there, right? And it, does, is there a, an agreement? Does that constitute an agreement that those projects got to be complete? I'm assuming yes. Yeah, so the way that so you thought, can just take that money and just do whatever they want. No. Okay. So there's an agreement. I think Jim would be very upset if that happened. Yeah. All right. Okay. I can't tell you the timing on it because there's more funding that's needed than just our contribution on all those things. Okay. But because but, presumably there's some sort of agreement, whether it's just a traffic movement permit or a separate agreement between the town and DOT, there's some agreement that's gonna make sure those things happen. Okay. That's it. Okay. Good. All right, I think we'd like to make a motion. Okay. All right. Um, I move to approve the site plan for 169 Taco Fair Mall Road, tax map mm -hmm. R05, lot 021D 10, with staff recommendation, uh, recommended conditions 1 through 26, and the findings identified in the staff memo dated October 6, 2022, um, with changes as made at the meeting. To remove the uh, the bullet about the outdoor facilities. Um, the board finds that the site plan application meets the applicable standards of section 175.8 and chapter 225 of the Thompson Code. Second. Do we have any questions? No. Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.